back to my channel and on this episode we're going to be talking about episode 8 of Lovecraft Country. This episode is called Jigaboo Boo. Yes, that's what this episode is called. This episode is going to be focused on Diana because in the last episode we found out that Diana's comic book was left underneath the police officer who was killed. So somehow they're going to connect Diana to this crime scene even though she's like 12 years old and was in Chicago when this happened, but we'll see what happens. So at the beginning of this episode, we see a lot of people, looks like behind a church, they're all in church clothes, but they're all in black church clothes. So somebody died and it's very hot. Like everyone looks like they're sweating really crazily and like they're using their fans. And uh, this woman comes out of the church and she starts throwing up. So I don't know if it was from the heat, but when we get over to the characters, we realize that Emmett Till has been killed. So they finally have wrapped up that whole situation in the show. This was the funeral of Emma Till and I'm sure that lady that threw up threw up because the mother in real life like this actually happened. His mother left the casting open so that the population could see what these men did to her son and I'll say I'll talk about what they did later. We get all the characters here and uh, Diana is obviously very scared and you know tormented. That was one of her best friends who was killed. He was only 14 years old so everyone is just you know trying to stay together trying to tell each other that things well things aren't going to be okay but they're sick of everything that's happening and that they just need to stick together today because on this day that someone was like brutally murdered after the funeral like who knows how the other side's gonna you know affect things but it was interesting to see too because it wasn't just black people at this funeral like there was white people too here at this funeral because i'm sure that angered tons of people he was a 14 year old boy who just whistled out a woman so doesn't matter with race and everything like that, like this kid was brutally murdered. And Emmett Till's death was actually one of the starting events that started the civil rights movement. His brutal death was one of the paving ways to the civil rights movement. So Diana is just struggling with the loss of her friend and like just wants to get out of there so she kind of disappears and they're all looking for her. So Letty goes back to her house to try to find if she's there. Montrose goes back to um, George's house to see if she's going to go home. And then Atticus is kind of just walking around everywhere. He kind of looks like he's in a hurry so he's just going whatever. Um, but Diana we see her. She's walking just down the street by an arcade and she's just seeing all these little girls like laughing and having fun. And these two little girls in front of the arcade were like laughing and giggling and like turned around to wave at her and she just got really upset and just threw rocks at them and said like this is no day to laugh like the little boy literally just got murdered like why are you having fun why are you laughing so she was just really upset about that and when she's walking down the street a police car comes up and it happens to be Captain Lancaster and they're following her down the alley and basically asking if she's Diana Freeman because obviously the book and if she knows about magic and she's like what are you talking about like in books of course and then with the cop behind her is like putting down spells on the floor captain lancaster starts doing a spell and so i don't know what he's saying but he's doing a spell and these worms are coming out from under the ground and he spits in his hand and puts it on her head and like she stops she says she can't breathe and stuff like that all of a sudden they let her go and she's just like what just happened like this guy literally just put spit on my forehead and she couldn't breathe and all this stuff so they let her go and she just starts running off and then she was like looking at this cream of wheat poster while she was getting choked out and when she left the cream of wheat poster like looked her way so that was very creepy <laughs> so i guess the magic whatever happened the magic began because it started looking at her when she was like running away but it's a poster so how can it do that weird um so when letty is at the house uh she sees her shoes outside of the door south korean culture that is respect for the house you take off your shoes before you enter a house so Right there, we kind of understood that who was going to be there was Jaya. So she goes inside and Jaya's waiting for Letty and she's like, who are you? And she's like, I'm here to see Atticus. So I'm sure they're going to sit down and start talking about Atticus and like all their history and stuff. So kind of sucks that Letty's going to have to hear this information from some random girl that happened to know exactly where they lived and everything like that. So that's going to be very interesting when Atticus finally gets there. So Diana finally goes home, her house and Montrose is there and he's just like trying to go to her and she's like of course upset and everything 
and like doesn't want to talk about anything so she locks herself in her room or in the bathroom and Montrose was saying like I know what you're going through like my friend they took my friend when I was younger you got you can't like let them get to you in that way like you have to if you're gonna fight you gotta defend you know fight to your best whatever and Diana's putting on a hat she's putting on shoes like she's trying to get out of there again and then she looks over and sees an Uncle Tom's book and on the front cover it's the stigma of a black, like a long, young black girl with hair all crazy with little bow ties at the end and obviously like darkened skin that's like super dark and stuff and then a little white woman like looking all pristine and nice um, in front of a mirror and when Diana keeps looking at the book it changes and it shows the young African American girl like looking crazy and the white girl entire like face and bodies in the mirror so like the on the front cover like the black girl killed the white girl so she's just seeing weird things so whatever the captain did to her she's just seeing some weird stuff so she gets freaked out and leaves and Montrose goes in there to see that the book it was on the floor and obviously the cover is back to normal. We go to William slash Christina's house because they're the same person. Ruby's trying to get in, she's using the keys to get in and this white guy comes by and like, what are you doing here? Like, what do you want? Because it's a mansion obviously and he's just like, are you the maid? Or she's like, I'm not a maid and he's like, what did you say to me? Blah, blah, blah. So he's going over to her and then William comes up, so it's not Christina right now, but it's William, comes up and like asks if there's an issue and they go inside together and like William's undressing Ruby and putting her in the shower and all this kind of stuff and William starts to kiss Ruby but again this is Christina so I just I don't know what their relationship is I don't know if Christina really likes Ruby I don't know if she feels differently in William's body I have no idea but they start kissing again she's just like no like stop and gets up but then she takes the potion again the Dell potion so then Ruby turns into Dell Christina's William and then they have sex so it's just really weird and like towards the end of it she's coming out of the thing so she's turning into Ruby again so I don't know what's going on with the relationship it's just super weird so after that she goes and sees Christina's back to normal and she's talking to Christina about Emmett Till's death and saying like you should I guess like feel guilty in a way because like your kind is doing it or whatever and like do you feel anything that he just died like brutally and stuff like that and she basically told Ruby that no I don't feel anything for his death I don't feel anything for the murderers I don't feel anything for any of the situation she thinks that he she doesn't feel anything either. She basically told Ruby like the reason why you took the potion is because you don't want to feel like a black woman anymore or something like that. Like you want to, I don't know. So it's something weird. So I guess Ruby's just fighting with herself if she wants to be a black woman because obviously with all the hurt and pain that comes with it or would she just rather just be have an easier life and be a white woman. So I guess she's like out of dilemma and then Christina knows what she wants. I don't know. The relationship is just weird. I just don't understand it yet. So Diana's at a train station going wherever she's trying to go. I don't know where she's going. But then she like looks into the like this dark area like where the stairs are and then she sees the Uncle Tom character from the book come to life and there's like two of them. There's like two versions. Um, they have like ratty clothes on and one sock's up, one sock is down. Their hair is all crazy like the picture was and she's freaking out like asking the people next to her like do you see that and they're like what are you talking about we don't see anything so Diana's just losing her mind in a way. So she's trying to run away from these things because these things keep chasing her and she ends up getting away for a little bit. Atticus again at the house and he's trying to get like a cast he's trying to do a spell to cast a spell to protect you know him and his family and like just the community and uh Jaya and Letty are waiting for him when he gets there and basically Letty looks upset Jaya looks kind of happy that he's there like happy to see him after this time and he's pretty upset that she's there and he told or she told Letty everything about their history and stuff so Letty and Atticus have this huge huge fight like the first fight because he just wants to cast a spell but she was like telling him well Jaya just told us you're gonna die so why are you gonna try to cast a spell like there's so much that we could lose and he's like you don't think I can know what we're losing and obviously she's pregnant and she hasn't told him yet so she's kind of like not really like you don't know yet and she's trying to beg him to stay and he's just out the door so he leaves um that was like their very first real huge fight that we've seen on the show like they were screaming at each other but obviously she cares about him like loves him loves him and she's carrying his child so she just wants to make sure he's being safe so then Atticus is just walking down the street and he finds his father just sitting on the street drinking <laughs> 
what Montrose always does. And they sit down together and he asks his father, like, did you cheat on my mom? Basically, because he's still upset about his dad being gay. And he's like, well, I've had desires, but I never acted upon it. Obviously, Atticus still doesn't know that his mom was the one cheating with his uncle, which could be his father. So I think Montrose is just keeping that from him because obviously he doesn't want to hurt him more about that whole situation because not only is it going to hurt their family but it's also going to hurt Hippolyta because Hippolyta was uh, her husband cheated on her so obviously it's just going to cause more issues because they're both dead now so I think Montrose is just what's the harm of keeping it a secret like you are my son I raised you even though you may not be my biological son. So they're just sitting there talking and everything and uh, Montrose was telling Atticus a story about his friend in church, I believe, who was gay. They found they found him uh, with a man at the church, and that these policemen came in to arrest him, took him to an asylum, drilled stuff in his brain, and he was just left there like in a comatose state. So I basically told Atticus like I was not going to end up like that. So I had to hide who I was, so I was I wouldn't have to end up in an asylum. So obviously, who wants to end up in an asylum for being who they are? So very very hard for a lot of people who were gay or bi or anything back in the day. So then Atticus tells Montrose that he knows that Letty is pregnant. He was kind of surprised like oh like oh I have a grandson or a grandchild or something. Atticus tells Montrose about the book that he found that we found and he mentioned that George wasn't the George that we thought it was because a whole different person. George was Atticus's son. So he went into the future, I guess. So that's kind of how he figured out that Letty was pregnant. I don't know if he like knew before then, but he figured out after finding that book with this kid that looks just like Atticus that that's his son. So basically told Montrose that this is, I have a son coming and like we have to cast a spell to be safe and like protect our own. And even though the spell could kill me, like I'm still gonna do is try to protect us. And Montrose basically told him like, whatever happens, I'm gonna do whatever I can to protect my family and my grandson son so even if it kills me so Montrose is in all the way to protect Atticus if that comes to it. Atticus is telling Montrose about like what was in the book because he asked him if he read the book and he said that George survived an Artem so I feel like it's the future but a different reality because George didn't survive obviously an Artem in this timeline but maybe he did in a different one where he went to. So George survived in that timeline. Christina is a man which is William but she's already William so is she like really William or is she still using potions? I don't know. Christina sacrifices Atticus so she could become immortal. So that's kind of how he dies and it happens on this day which is five days away from the time that they're talking so I'm I'm sure that's gonna be like the season finale is when Christina is trying to sacrifice Atticus or something like that so they just make a pledge to try to stay alive and figure out try to defeat Christina in a way because like Christina isn't like the big bad guy in the show but her attentions are obviously for herself so who knows what she'd do to get to that full power that she's looking for. So Letty's at the church and she's saying prayers for protection for Atticus as well as Emmett Till's family. Christina comes in there and Christina basically like they're a meeting I think to exchange things like Letty wants Christina to put an invulnerability spell on Atticus but she's like no I'm gonna put it on you instead for like the pages that she's been looking for. So she was leaving and then Letty changed her mind and she's like you know what I'm gonna do it. So she got a protection spell on her and there's like a it's the spell of cane that went on her side so like engraved in her side that means she's protected she can't be hurt or anything like that so she was looking out for her and her child so she cannot be hurt at all and Christina got what she wanted so we finally find out where Diana is trying to go she finds him follows him to his little secret hideout busts through the door and like asks if her mom is dead and all this stuff and he's like yeah possibly <laughs> So he was just like, this little girl's coming in here like she owns the place. She was, she went in there like she owned the place. Telling him about the people that are following her, like those little girls, and that he can make it go away if she brings him the Ori that her mom found. He's like, I know what an Ori is, and Hippolyta, it means it's like from Greece, it's not from Africa, because the cops said like, these African names but much. She said it's from Greece so she was just upset at these people. She like obviously is not gonna give this captain what she, what he wants so she spits on him and basically tells him to F off and then she's like it stinks in here. <laughs> 
the dead body that's chilling in the closet. So. so then it's nighttime and we see Christina by the docks with these two white guys. Basically it's like telling them to do your worst I guess and that they're like are you sure you want this done? And she's like yeah I paid you. So then she starts getting beat up by these guys like beat to crap by these guys and she's trying to fight back and stuff but she's just getting beat and beat and beat and beat. I see them wheeling like a wheel over and then I instantly knew what was happening. So when Ruby mentioned to her about feeling how Emmett Till died and stuff like that, I guess she put it to real cause because these she paid these guys to kill her in the way that Emmett Till was killed. So she was beaten horrifically and then they tied barbed wire around her neck and pulled it tightly and attached it to a wheel which then they put into the river and dragged her into the river basically and that that is how this 14 year old boy Emmett Till was killed in real life he was beaten to a pulp and then was hung with bob wire and then put into the ocean or into the river with a wheel that put his body down there so it was, you know, hard to see because that actually happened to this boy in real life. It was important to see that these men did this to this kid. So it was very, very, very hard scene to watch because obviously you know it happened to this kid and he was, I can't even imagine being in his shoes at all. So when she went into the water, she obviously put a protection spell on her so she wouldn't die. So she jumped out of the water and she just started bawling and screaming and crying because she finally realized what it was like to be in a till and to feel these kind of things. So I think she was doing it for Ruby in a way. So I, don't, I think she likes Ruby, <laughs> I guess. So I think she just did it for a way to like feel something because I don't know she doesn't really like she shows emotion but it wasn't like that I've never seen her like with that emotion in the show yet so I think she did it to finally feel something she died in the way that Emmett Till died so then Letty and Ruby are at the house they're talking and Ruby basically tells Letty that I know all about magic and all this kind of stuff like Christine and I have been you know doing stuff blah, blah and then Letty's like you can't trust Christina all this kind of stuff and all of a sudden we hear like your house is surrounded you need to come out right now and it's Captain Lancaster at her house and they said that we have a warrant to search your place they're trying to find either the orrery or they're trying to find the pages but they're trying to find something from the Winthrop house that's why they're there that's why Captain Lancaster is there to try to find these things that his friend was using so this one cop gets into the door and then he's about to walk into the door but of course since he's using magic she has has the protection on the house up still so when he was trying to enter it blocked him so he could not enter the house so he realizes that Letty and them know magic because they have a thing on the door obviously she's not the one that did it but like he doesn't know that now but the cops go outside and, like we're leaving blah, blah blah and then when they're walking back into the house all of a sudden all these guns start going off and start shooting into the house so he's just trying to kill them maybe if they kill Letty they can gain access into the house something like that but they just start shooting into the house and all the people in there I don't see any of her roommates get killed but of course they're getting shot at and there was hundreds of rounds so who knows if someone did get killed after that was happening um, but Atticus finally makes it back to the house and he sees all these cops there and we see like Letty slowly coming up out of her little hiding place because she does have the you know the spell on her so I think she was trying to test to see if it was real and it was real because all the bullets were like going around her and if they were like coming near her they would kind of cascade off of her in the other direction so the spell that she put on her actually worked she can't get hurt so that's really good to know that you know Christina kept her word in that regard so Atticus is there and the cops see him over there and they all point their gun at him and like he has his hands up he's not doing anything the cops are like getting nervous and stuff Letty sees what's gonna happen so she starts sprinting outside trying to get in front of him before they shoot at him of course she can't make it that far from a bullet to get shot into him so the cop pulls the trigger and the bullets come in towards Atticus and he's about to get shot and then all of a sudden the gravel behind or underneath him starts like bursting in the air and one of the monsters from the very first episode comes up out of the ground but this time he's not like pale colored he's like a gray color so I was like oh it's like a little different monster but he comes up out of the ground and then he starts going to town on the cops like cars are going thrown people are getting thrown everywhere so Atticus and Letty are trying to get into the house but they can't because the car is blocking their path and stuff so they have to like go around and try to like get it get around this monster thing and the monster like comes at them and then Atticus puts his hand up to it and he starts touching its head and the monster's just chilling there so 
the spell that Atticus and Montrose cast actually worked. So he has like a protector, I guess. So I don't know if he knows how to control it yet, but at the very end of the episode. And then meanwhile, after that happened, uh, we see that Diana is fighting off those two girls in the garage. Montrose goes in there to find her because she he can hear her screaming in there and obviously he can't see the girls, but the girls finally end up touching her. So there's like black things coming out of her veins. So I don't know what's gonna happen with Diana now, but it looks like she just got either infected or maybe it's dying. I don't know, but something's gonna happen to Diana. He literally has his hand on the monster and she's like, oh, the spell worked. <laughs> and then the episode ends. So my questions for this episode basically is how is Atticus gonna control this monster? Like, does he have to find a whistle? Is it just gonna like follow him around? Like, does he know how to like make the monster disappear? All that kind of stuff. And will he use it again to kill more people? Cause obviously like it sucks, but those people were bad, but they did get killed and it's not Atticus's hand. So we'll see what happens. Obviously they're trying to kill him, so self-defense with his monster. Another question is what's gonna happen to Diana now because those girls did touch her, so is she gonna die? And then is Hippolyta gonna come back yet? She was not even back in this episode, so where is Diana, or where is Hippolyta, and what is she doing? So that is the end of this episode. I cannot wait, we're almost there. We have two more episodes left until we get into the season finale. Very curious to see what's gonna happen then. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye.